In this video, I want to look at the idea of orthogonality a little bit more geometrically. So far, we've been largely concerned it as a algebraic property that the dot product of two things is equal to zero. And in particular, I want to focus on the idea of orthogonal projection. So, I want you to suppose that you have some vector, how about this one right here, and I'm going to call this vector the vector y. And then, I want to suppose that there's some other vector here, uh, how about this one, and this is the vector that I'm going to call u. Then, this is the problem that I want to pose. Can I find a so-called vertical projection and I've drawn it in a vertical way, but I could orient this however I wished, where there was a 90 degree angle down here, and, and the key property here being that there's this 90 degree angle, so that we have managed to take this vector y and drop it straight down onto this vector u. And it doesn't really matter how those two different vectors are oriented in space, Wherever they are, if you have one vector, you can always ask the question, what is the orthogonal projection down onto some other vector? Now, notice that really what I've done in this picture is define two other vectors. One of them is going to be this vector here. It's a vector parallel to u, but it isn't u exactly. And I'm going to refer to this vector as the y vector, but then I'm going to put an additional hat on top of it to denote that it's the orthogonal projection of this vector y. And because this vector is something that, that it lies down parallel to the u vector, it's not the u vector because it's a different length, but it's parallel to it, I can say that this y hat, as I will express it, is some coefficient alpha, that's just a scalar, in that u direction. And then we also have this vector here. This is the vector that sits straight up, and it's sort of the vector which is the orthogonal projections complement, if you will. It's the vector where you, when you take the orthogonal projection, the y hat, and you add what I will call the vector z to it, you get the vector y. So the relationship that we've established here is that the vector y is equal to the vector y hat, its orthogonal projection, plus the z vector, and that's the relationship that we want to have. So, Really what I'm trying to compute here, the, the main goal, is to find out what is this alpha. We know that the orthogonal projection is lying in the direction of u, but, but what is the alpha here? Now, the expression that I've written down hasn't yet captured the idea of orthogonality. Indeed, any triangle would obey some relationship like this. I haven't put in the fact that I want this 90 degree angle. So, if I want to assert that I've got orthogonality, then this is going to imply, well, orthogonality is something about a dot product of these two vectors being zero. It's telling me that the z vector I have and that the vector that's either, I could either use y hat or u, it's parallel, it doesn't matter, that that vector along the bottom, that those dot products are going to be zero. So in other words, I am asserting that the z vector dotted with the u vector is equal to zero. That's what it means to say that z is orthogonal to this vector u and that I've got an orthogonal projection. And then I can come up here and I can rearrange that formula for z. z here is just y minus y hat. So I can express this as the vector y minus the vector y hat. That's a stand-in for z. I'm taking its dot product and saying that this is equal to zero. And finally, I, I know about y hat, I have this expression, so I can come along and fire this into here. So this is going to be the same thing as saying that the vector y minus alpha u, all of that dotted with vector u is equal to zero. And then finally, I can come along here and do some computations. Remember my goal here, my goal is always to find the value of alpha. So I want to try to identify it. So first of all, I'm going to have y minus u. Note that I can compute y minus u because I begin with the y and I begin with the u. Those are my two pieces of information. Project the y orthogonally, orthogonally down onto the u. So I for sure have a y and a u. And then this is going to be equal to alpha and then u dot u. And I can compute u dot u as well. And so final step, I have to divide. 
I will come along and get my alpha, and it is going to be the y dotted with the u, all divided out by this expression, the u dotted with the u. And if you happen to have figured out what the alpha is, we could now go back and substitute to get for the z value. Uh, this would then be that my z is equal to the value of y minus this y hat, and y hat is alpha u, so y minus this alpha value that we just computed here, so y dot u all divided out by u dot u, and that's just a coefficient alpha, and the y hat was the alpha times u, so y minus u. So with these two different formulas, we can either figure out what the y hat is by getting the alpha, or we can go and substitute it back in and get the z. So I have all the information that I could need for my orthogonal projection. So now that we have this really nice geometric interpretation of orthogonality and that we can compute an orthogonal projection, let me return to the more algebraic flavor that we'd seen in the previous video, this notion of having an orthogonal basis and deducing a formula for the coefficients when you expanded some vector in terms of an orthogonal basis. And what you'll notice is that the formula that we have here for the AIs, so in other words, a, a dot product on the top divided by a, a length or a dot product on the bottom, and then in particular, I want to notice that if we have the formula that we saw before up here, that was for the coefficients, and the formula that we have down here, outside of a change in the names of the variables, they're the same formula. So indeed, if we're going to be investigating what happens when we try to expand out some vector in a basis, the coefficients for this vector that we expand out in the basis, all of the ai down to the ans, that what we have is a projection formula for each of those. So now we can interpret this expansion in an orthogonal basis as the following. It is the projection of a vector onto each of the orthogonal basis vectors. And the coefficients are just all of those orthogonal projections. So I'm going to put this all together into a picture here. Uh, let me draw a three-dimensional axis here. So I'm drawing what looks like the normal two, but then I draw one out here, and I'm going to label them. This is my x my y and my z, it obeys a right-hand rule if you curl your fingers. And then if I take some generic vector, how about like this? That's the vector and I will call it the vector x, not to be confused with its first component x. Well, one thing I could do is I could imagine a vertical projection onto the xy plane. And, and what we have down here is a vertical projection not onto a vector, but all the way down onto the xy plane. And then when you've got this other sort of projected vector that lives in the xy plane, this is a projection, you could then project that vector onto either the x-axis or the y-axis. So in other words, what you get here is going to be just the first component, that's the amount in the x-direction, and then you get a y-component, and this line up here would be the z component. So if you think about having the standard basis vectors, the standard basis vectors for R3 is a vector, which is along the x-axis, a vector, that's the E1, the vector E2, and the vector E3. That's our standard basis, and our standard basis is orthogonal. You could verify that if I take 1, 0, 0, and dot it with 0, 1, 0, that's our two basis vectors, that its dot product is going to be 0. So then, if I take this particular vector x, that I can always rewrite it as its first component times the first basis vector plus the second component times the second basis vector, and finally plus the third component times the third basis vector. And then when I want to think about this x1, this x2, and this x3 here, well, here they are, the x1, the x2, and the x3, we see them as these orthogonal projections. And 
Indeed, if we wanted to try to compute out what the x1 is going to be, we could verify that the x1 here is going to be the same thing as taking the vector x dotted with e1 divided by e1 dotted with e1. Well, e1 dotted with e1 is just going to be the value of 1, and x1 dotted e1, this is just going to be the same thing as x1, x2, x3, that's the vector x, dotted with 1, 0, 0, that's what my e1 is, that is indeed equal to just the x1. So my formula here is valid. In other words, in this specific example where I have this specific orthogonal set, the standard basis, that our projection formula becomes very simple. It just gives out the x1s and I get the normal expansion of x in terms of the standard basis that we had before. It's just that now I've interpreted it as an orthogonal projection in this particular picture.